While the name Taito may not be as well known today as Capcom and Sega, there once was a time when they dominated the arcade scene, with hits like Space Invaders, Bubble Bobble, Arkanoid, and Chase HQ, Taito was responsible for many of the top coin-operated games of the 1980s and 90s. In fact, they have so many great titles under their belt that they could spend the next decade releasing killer game compilations and still not even come close to covering them all. Don't believe me? Then let me draw your attention to the Taito Milestone series, which had its first installment debut last year and has already announced the third compilation will drop in 2024. The second game in the collection just hit the Switch a few days ago, bringing with it 10 more Taito classics that range from recognizable hits to obscure gems. There's some incredible games in this package, but is it worth 40 bucks? That's what we're about to find out when I review Taito Milestones 2 on the Switch. If you played the first game, then you're gonna feel right at home with Taito Milestones 2. This is a bare-bones compilation featuring 10 more Taito classics, all of which had been previously released as part of the Arcade Archive series. There's no theme connecting the titles or anything, it's just a grab bag full of different years and genres. The one constant is that each game comes with its own settings, customization, manuals, online rankings, and more given us at least a little control over how we experience each and every one of the games in this collection. Spanning the years 1984 to 1992, this is a nice mix of genuine hits, underappreciated classics, and hidden gems. There are also a couple of clunkers, which is par for the course when it comes to this type of compilation. With only 10 games, we're going to take a critical look at each and every one of the titles featured in Taito Milestones 2. Let's go ahead and start with Ben Barrow Bay, a 1984 action game starring a firefighting superhero that seems to exclusively help damsels in distress. While it may be the oldest game in the collection, Ben Barrow Bay still has a lot going for it. The single screen action reminds me a lot of the original Donkey Kong, where our hero needs to go from floor to floor dodging obstacles and putting out fires. The gameplay is a bit sluggish, and there are a lot of cheap deaths here. But I'd say this cult classic is worth playing at least once or twice. I had a good time with it once I got a hang of the slower pacing. Sure, The Legend of Kage is flawed and it's a bit hard to get into 38 years later, but once you get the hang of it, this fast-paced action game is so much fun. It's an action game that bucks almost every convention, starting with the very first level where we're walking from right to left. It's also in the way that Kage can leap dozens of feet in the air and even climb a tree like a cat. I love how vertical the stages are and how much variety there is from one section to the next. Unfortunately, there are a lot of cheap hits and the gameplay takes a little getting used to, but The Legend of Kage is the fastest and most exciting action game in this entire package. Taito Milestones 2 is packed full of great shoot 'em ups, and Kiki Kai Kai is easily one of the best. Now, if the game looks familiar, then it might be because this 8 bit action game was followed by a Super Nintendo sequel called Pocky and Rocky, a cult classic that everybody should seek out immediately. Kiki Kai Kai is full of cool villains, tough bosses, and levels that have you walking in every direction. Seriously, that's a novelty in 1986. I'm not saying that it's the best game in this package, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Of all the games featured in this compilation, the New Zealand story is definitely the one that's been ported to the most systems. Look, it's easy to see why when you start playing it, as it stars an immensely likable Kiwi hero trying to survive a colorful world with a ton of cool weapons. This is one of those 2D platformers that gets everything right, especially when it comes to the variety. In just the first couple of stages we go from jumping on floating platforms to diving underwater to exploring the sky in a hot air balloon. There are definitely elements that have aged poorly in the last 35 years, no doubt about it. But the New Zealand story remains one of Taito's best platformers and a great addition to this collection. In a sea full of great shooters, Darius 2 stands above them all. This is a port of the epic three-monitor arcade cabinet, which gives players an unprecedented, super-wide display full of fish-themed aliens. 
From the insane detail on the bosses, to the cool power-ups, to the way we're able to choose our own path from level to level, there's just so much to love about this game. It's the rare kind of arcade shooter where you can replay the game multiple times and not see the same batch of levels. With so much replay and the awe-inspiring widescreen display, Darius 2 is the one game in this package that I'm going to come back to time and time again. One of the 1980s best shooters is also a real highlight in this collection. Now here's a fun little platformer. Liquid Kids is a bright and colorful game starring a hippopotamus named Hippopo who throws water bombs that'll freeze our enemies in their tracks. While the heroes, locations, and gameplay may be different, Liquid Kids reminds me a little bit of Bubble Bobble. The way the water bombs work against not only the enemies, but also the vehicles and level obstacles is unique, making this one of the most surprising games in this package. Gun Frontier is yet another reminder that Taito knows how to make great shoot-em-ups. This is a vertical scrolling shooter inspired by the Wild West, but not in the way that Capcom's Gunsmoke was. Instead of a literal western, this is more in spirit, giving us a space shooter set in the 22nd century that takes its influence from old Clint Eastwood movies. The result is a fairly straightforward shooter with a great sense of style. It's challenging but fair, expertly crafted by some of the best shoot-em-up developers of that era. And before you ask, yes, it's way better than that 2011 movie Cowboys and Aliens. Solitary Fighter may have been released in the same year as Street Fighter 2, but this fighting game feels like it's a thousand years old. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighter that is very much locked in the past, which makes this arcade oddity feel more like Pit Fighter than Street Fighter. Many of the stages let you just walk around, almost as if it's a one-on-one -on -one version of Final Fight or Streets of Rage. In this sense, it actually reminds me a lot of the two-player mode in the Nintendo Entertainment System version of Double Dragon. While I like how big and detailed the characters are, and it definitely plays better than Pit Fighter, Solitary Fighter is one of the weaker games in this collection. Ugh, if only Taito was as good as making fighting games as they are making shooters! Look, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the company that brought you the Darius franchise knows a thing or two about making great shoot-'em-ups. Metal Black is another great example of Taito's excellence in the genre, and it's easily one of my favorite games in this package. The levels look great, the bonus stages are creative, and there's something addictive about being able to upgrade your weapons dozens of times. With the exception of a Saturn port that never found its way outside of Japan, this is one of those arcade shooters that never got much console love. As a result, it's one of those classic shooters that genre fans just haven't played before. And boy, are they in for a treat! Metal Black is a great game. The newest game in the collection is 1992's Dino Rex, a dinosaur-themed fighting game with more than a passing resemblance to Primal Rage. As a concept, there's nothing cooler than the idea of two massive dinosaurs going at it. However, it was the horrible gameplay that led to the extinction of this game. We get a punch and kick button that you can manipulate by holding the joystick in different directions. For example, if you want your T-Rex to smack an opponent down with his giant tail, you'd push the kick button while holding the upright diagonal on the control pad. The problem is that these moves were finicky and slow, often not popping off in time to actually hit the opponent. Worse yet, the dinos have limited special moves, which means that everything ends up revolving around the power meter, a gauge that you charge up by holding up on the joystick. Look, I want to love Dino Rex, but it's the terrible gameplay that's going to keep me from coming back to it anytime soon. As you can see, it's kind of a mixed bag when it comes to Taito's hits. I'd say that a little bit more than half the games are either great or must plays, but the rest range from being frustrating to just interesting novelties. It's the kind of thing where the batting average is fine when the compilation is cheap, but when the package costs $40, the decision may not be as cut and dry. That price is especially offensive when you discover how bare bones the package actually is. Look, I hate to compare everything to what Digital Eclipse is doing. But we're living in a post-Atari 50 world here, and this type of bare-bones compilation just isn't going to cut it anymore. I'm not saying that Taito needs to film hours of documentary footage and scan fan letters, but this game doesn't even come with a description of the games. 
There's no context, no history, no pictures of the arcade cabinets. What you see on the title screen is what you get. And that's just not enough to justify the $40 asking price. I love old school Taito and enjoy many of these games, but you're better off waiting for a sale when it comes to Taito Milestones too. Featuring 10 arcade classics spanning the years 1984 to 1992, Taito Milestones 2 is another solid mix of big and small titles from the hip maker. Between Darius 2, Metal Black, Gun Frontier, and Kiki Kai Kai, there are some genuinely great shoot 'em ups in this package, as well as popular action games like The Kiwi Story and The Legend of Kage. Sure, the quality of this lineup is a bit hit or miss. But the real problem is the expensive asking price and the bare bones approach. With no extra content and only so so games, Taito Milestones 2 is not worth $40. Hey, thanks for watching my review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. In fact, this is our third review of the week, and it was a nice change of pace after the bridge curse. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite video game compilation? Oh boy, there have been so many highlights recently, like Atari 50 and that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles compilation. But hey, don't forget about that Namco collection on the PlayStation 1, or even the Capcom arcade classic set on PSP. Also, that Rare Replay set on the Xbox was pretty damn cool. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back next week with more stuff. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 